Studio 88 has, through a private equity partnership with RMB Ventures, grown its retail footprint from 100 stores to almost 500, while at the same time upping its turnover from just under a billion rand to more than 3 billion rands. Joining us with more on the South African growth story is Dwight Sneeman from RMB Ventures and Viet Sven, who's CFO at Studio 88. Viet, Dwight, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank, thank you for having us. Now, if we can start off with you, Vitz, tell us a bit about Studio 88. What exactly does it do and when did this business come to be? It's an interesting story. Lawrence Werners, our executive chairman, has been a successful entrepreneur, um, starting a few businesses and sold them. When he was approached in 2001 by two of his ex-employees who wanted to start their own business and needed seed capital. Um, he agreed that it would keep him busy while um, he was on retirement. They opened one store on the corner of um, Small Street Mall and it was immediately a success. The business basically is um, a clothing retailer selling international brands such as Adidas, Nike, Puma, Levi's to predominantly uh, men um, and in the emerging market. Um, the business grew from 2001 with one store over the years until um, 2010. It was a, uh, almost 100 stores. Um, that is when one of the partners decided that he actually wants to exit. So Dwight, presumably that's when you and RMB Ventures came onto the scene. When this business first caught your attention, what made it so attractive? What is interesting is Lawrence and I have had a relationship that actually goes back uh, to the late 1990s. So this isn't the first time that uh, from a private equity perspective uh, we've partnered with Lawrence or I've partnered with Lawrence. So when we got the call, um, you know, given our prior experiences, we were very happy to take it and started engaging with Lawrence. And what happened was the conversation very quickly morphed from um, what do we do with this slug of equity that's become available and it quickly morphed into a situation where we said, all right, well, that's one solution, but what is it that we need to do with a business? What can we do collectively with a business to really broaden its strategic horizons and uh, set it up for you know, the next 10 years of its, of its growth? And this one question obviously influenced the way in which the deal was structured, because typically private equity deals are characterized by management buyouts, but this wasn't the case. Tell us why and what kind of structure RMB opted for. Yes, that's quite interesting. Uh, management buyouts has kind of been the staple of uh, the private equity industry you know, worldwide and also in South Africa. Um, but that has traditionally or has become more and more formulaic. This is what we would call or style a, uh, a, a, a replacement capital transaction where a minority stake in a business becomes available. And then for you as the private equity partner to hop on the bus, so to speak, and to partner an existing entrepreneurial management team and or you know, inject yourself into a family business and then take it from where it is up in terms of corporate governance, in terms of structure, and really you know, with the kind of financial muscle that comes with a credentialed financial partner like RMB Ventures, um, you know, set it up for, for, for its next, uh, for its next um, growth phase. Now, before we talk about how you've helped to set it up for its next growth phase, talk to me a bit more about this replacement capital structure, just how the opportunities for private equity change because of this. We have done a number of them over the last few years, and what we really like about um, that style of transacting is it typically avoids the processes which you know larger MBOs go through, where you sort of shepherded through a bunch of hurdles and gates by an advisor. And it gives you an opportunity to spend time with the management and the, the current owners of the business. And that gives you an ability, certainly from an RMB Ventures perspective, gives us an ability to you know, bring to bear stuff that we're proud of in terms of our ability to unpack a business model, understand a business model, and maybe project and think forward in terms of how that horizon of the business can be changed, uh, either by bolstering you know, management in terms of resources, which is what we did in this case when, when, we, uh, when we asked Vitz to join the, the, the studio team, which has been, you know, obviously was one of the key ingredients. So that's kind of the thinking. It, uh, it allows you to differentiate your offering to differentiate your ability to add value, uh, rather than being one of 10 guys in a process, and uh, the way you win that is you pay more than anyone else. Okay, so you also mentioned that it allows you to engage more with management teams. Now, in your engagement together, how did you support this business and also position it for success? I think one of the key things is you have to have an appreciation for 
the culture of a business like Studio. It is a deeply entrepreneurial business. It's aggressive, uh, it's fierce, it's fast moving. Um, it's not something that you get to tick a whole 100,000 boxes. Um, so with that appreciation and with the depth of relationships that get built, um, you know, you can marry sort of a pragmatic understanding from the management and from the entrepreneur side around your governance requirements and you can in turn separate the strategic and the operational domains and let the management team get on and do what they do best, which is buy and sell, um, you know, clothes. And Vitz, tell us a bit about what exactly has been achieved since RMB Ventures came on board and provided the support. So obviously there's been um, dramatic growth since RMB joined um, the studio team. Um, growing the business from 100 stores to almost 500, like you said initially, together with turnover and profitability. Um, but I would say the real value that um, that a private equity company like RMB Ventures brings to the party is to ask the right questions, to instigate debate um, in order to make the right decisions. Um, obviously, there's, there's, there's more direct um, benefits as well. Um, such as an instant credibility when you negotiate with uh, landlords and um, creditors, um, as well as with um, help with, with, with deal making um, and acquisitions. But it's, it's, the, it's more the subtleness um, of asking the right question that I think is, is adding the right value. I think just to add on to that, uh, if you ask our chairman, our executive chairman Lawrence, um, he's quoted as saying that, you know, it's one of the smarter business decisions that he's made in terms of picking, you know, uh, a, an appropriately aligned uh, private equity partner such as Ventures to join him. And, and the way he spells it out is he says the confidence that comes uh, with knowing that, you know, someone that is aligned and is kind of looking after the big picture stuff in terms of strategy or financial strategy of the business really frees up the entrepreneur to focus on growing the business, expanding the business, positioning the business. And it's those, it's that separation of domains, I think, which has worked very well. But I also, you know, I, I think it's, it's a much more activist style of investing, to replacement capital, you know, compared to a traditional management buyout where the trajectory and the glide path, you know, is kind of set up front. This one is much more dynamic. So, you know, we find ourselves chatting to the management team on and off on a weekly basis. It's not a four times a year quarterly board meeting where we sit and rehash the last three months numbers. It's a very much more interactive process, uh, which is very rewarding from our perspective. It, uh, you know, the whole activist element is, is, is exciting and rewarding and well, hopefully our partners enjoy it as well. But although, as you said, the trajectory is not set up front, you still have an exit in mind because that, that's what private equity is all about. How then will you decide at which point to exit? I think it's, it's a good question and, and one of the key uh, attractions for uh, an R&B ventures around some of these replacement capital transactions is they typically require longer to mature and uh, as a captive player rather than a fund, a time constrained fund uh, private equity manager, uh, that positions us well. We're able to hold assets for you know, significantly longer periods than potentially a fund which has got a, you know, opening date, closing date and, you know, is on a little bit of a treadmill. So we like that, you know, return, uh, time is the enemy of returns uh, generally, but when the business is growing, then time is your friend. So we're not in any hurry. Uh, the exit discussion is had up front and you establish congruence with the management of the business that this business at some stage, you know, will be Will be uh, will be sold, and but then it's around developing the business, and we'll collectively come to a decision when it's ready. I must tell you, we we've had a number of approaches over the last. Uh, we've been in the business now for five years. We've had a number of approaches. No one's been ready. The partnership is working well. The numbers are positive. So uh, we'll know. The phone will ring, and uh, and then we'll we'll find the right home for the business. It's also important. It's not something that you just package up and you know push down the river. You've got to find the right home for the business. Management will be int integrally involved in that conversation. In finding that right home for the business, what kind of structures would you put in place now to ensure its success beyond a partnership with RMB Ventures? I, I think that's already established. You know, the business has grown from a a large privately held business to a 
very large, but much more corporatized business, you know. Uh, we've got uh, systems set up. The systems environment is very strong. The control environment is very strong. Um, there's no doubt that a corporate home could be found for the business uh, and that any astute uh, credential corporate buyer would be able to go through and with real ease get through a due diligence of the business. It would pass a due diligence very, very comfortably. Viet's quite certainly bullish on the future of this business. From your perspective, from a Studio 88 perspective, what's next? I think expansion growth is in our DNA. Um, we will continue to look for new opportunities, whether that is additional storefronts that we can roll out, um, new territories to go into, um, and um, even expansion uh, across border. Maybe to add to that, in terms of setting out on the strategic journey uh, five odd years ago, you know, one of the key things we, we came up with was we decided to avoid introducing any leverage, any third party debt into the transaction, uh, which generally is a staple of management buyouts and private equity. And we did that because the plan and the, and the glide path was one of growth. And so, you know, for growth, you need oxygen, you need a little bit of headroom. So, and I think that has been one of the key successes and has differentiated the, the studio retail investment from some other, you know, private equity uh, retail investments where leverage was introduced and, you know, where that's caused a lot of stress. That's where we're going to leave it. Thank you for joining us, Vitz Dwight. That's Dwight Snowman, who's a senior principal at RMB Ventures, and Vitz Bien, who's CFO at Studio 88. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much.